And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today I'm taking a look at a game called Happy Pigs. Now, I've reviewed this in the past, but you may have missed it because I reviewed the original version which came out in Asia. This is the updated version from Yellow. The rules are pretty much identical. There may be some small changes that I don't know. The components are certainly much different. In this game, you are raising small pigs and you are selling them and growing them. Doesn't sound like it's a heavy game. It sounds like a little fun, silly game. Well, it is fun and silly, but there's more strategy in here than meets the eye. Let me show you. Each player gets their own field. They also get $45 uh, that they can spend at the beginning of the game to buy pigs and to buy equipment. Each player is also going to get four tiles. You're going to make a pile of season cards here. And at the beginning of each round, you're going to turn that season card over. There might be a special thing that goes into uh, account at the end of the season. But it also shows you all four tiles and a number in front of them. Each player is going to secretly pick one of these tiles and turn them over at the same time. If you are the only person to pick one of these tiles, you will get to use that action that many times. Oh, well, for each action you don't use, you can get a, a dollar or two. If you, let's say I did it with one other person, we would have to split it five and five. There's going to be a start marker in case there's a, an odd number or something, like let's say three players did ten and I was first and one of those three players, I would get four actions and then each of the other players involved would get three actions each. So players are gonna be splitting these, so you're trying to pick an action that has a lot, a big number or an action that you really want to take, but also you don't wanna pick something other people do because your, the number of actions that you have will go down. Now one of the things, actions that you can take is um, the feed action, this one here that shows food, and you're going to be able to increase for each number that you get of actions, you can increase the size of one of your pigs. Your pigs will grow, so this, me this small pig will change to a medium pig, or I can change a medium pig to a large pig. If I happen to have a baby pig, I can change it to a small pig, and I am, uh, I, uh, the size of this yard is the most that I can get. Fortunately, these pigs are square, so they fit around in there. The other, another action you can do is you can do the mate action. When you choose mate, you can choose two large or two medium pigs, and they will, for each time you use that action, you will get a baby pig. You can also buy up here. You can pay different costs. You can buy small pigs for three, I mean baby pigs for three, smalls for six, mediums for tens, large for 15. You can buy the three different types of equipment. Both all these equipments are very useful. For each vaccine you buy, you can spend it to vaccinate a pig. That pig is vaccinated. You can, you can also, also get the dietary supplement, which you, during the feeding phase, you can spend these to allow a pig to basically skip a size when it's growing. So this, this baby pig can go up to a medium and or a small pig can go directly to a large pig. And then you have the amulet of life for each of these that you spend when you have uh, when you have a kid with the two pigs that are mating, instead of it being a baby pig, it comes out immediately as a small pig. And then finally, the last action you can have is you can sell things, where you can take these pigs and sell them to the market. By the way, one of the actions you can take when you buy is you can buy another field. Uh, your first field, you start with one for free, but then you can buy another one for 10. You can buy another one for 15, and then another one for 20, and another one for 25, and so on. You probably won't need that many fields. And this is going to continue. Now, during each change of season, after a certain number of cards, we'll start a new season. When there's a new season, then all pigs who are not vaccinated are going to die. So you want to make sure you get all your pigs vaccinated before the season is up. At the end of the game, which is after the last season, after the last winter card, all your vaccinated pigs, because the unvaccinated ones will die, you sell them to the market for whatever the profit is, and whoever has the most money is the winner of the game. 
Now there's a couple tactical variants that you can play. One is, instead of players playing these tokens simultaneously, starting with player one, each player plays it face up one at a time. So you'll look at what other people have done and say, oh, he played a feeding. Um, I want to do feeding, but I don't want to split the action, so I'll pick something else. And you can also play where you can see the next season card that's coming, so you can see kind of what the special thing is and what actions are going to be available next turn. Anyhow, money wins you the game. I'll start out by saying that I think you should play with both variants. Really play with both variants because being able to see the, the tiles that people play will really change how you play the game. Um, and also knowing what the season comes up gives you kind of a, a, a little bit of a heads up. Oh, so that's what I should be doing. So I, that's what I would recommend. Now I have to tell you, this game is fun. The silly theme is there. You're like, oh, let's vaccinate the pigs. You got to get these pigs vaccinated. Oh, and there's a lot of uh, comments about making bacon and such with the pigs as they have all these little piglets. But what's the best way to win? Is it to, you know, get pigs and then produce and produce and produce and produce, grow them and then sell them? Or should you just buy them and produce a little bit? Maybe sometimes some of the cards will give you discounts when you buy pigs or an extra money. Like, for example, here, family day, each family who has all four sizes of pig will get $25. Or here, the price of piglets and becomes 6 10 15 and 21 which is not, not quite double, but pretty close to that. And so maybe that's a turn that you sell everything and then buy new pigs afresh next turn. There's actually a heavier Euro buy and sell game here than meets the eye, and yet the whole thing has a strong thematic flair to it. The whole pigs growing out silly, right? Those square pigs and such. But you really are trying to maximize the size of your field. You are trying to figure out, hey, I need to do this. You need to get those pigs vaccinated or they'll die. Or maybe you won't vaccinate them and sell them right before the season's over. Because what do you care? Uh, when's the best time to have the baby pigs just come out as small pigs instead? Uh, how many extra fields should you buy? They're expensive. Do you want to waste money on them? But at the same time, the more fields you have, the more pigs you can save up to maybe a season where they'll sell better. But because not every season card is used in the game, you're never quite sure what cards are going to be in that game and what's coming out. Uh, the game plays. There's a two-player variant here. and goes all the way up to six players. With six players, it's obviously a little bit crazier because you're going to always be splitting stuff with the other players. I mean, very rarely will you get something on your own. I think the game is best with four, although it works with all the other numbers too. With six, you definitely don't want, you have to use a tactical version with six. I can't imagine everyone flipping them over because you might split you know, a six action between four players, which just isn't that interesting. But still, it's a game that keeps you interested. It has like this cool simultaneous selection. It does work. I don't think it's a bad way to play the game. I just think the tactical version is better. But the whole, uh, the, you know, a whole group of actions, and you can decide how many, you know, which one you want to go for. Do you want the one with the more actions, or do you want the one that you think will help you best at that point? At the same time, there's only four. And so you have to, you know, and then when it comes to things that you buy, there's only like six or seven things to buy. But still, it just flows. The game flow here is really well done. So don't be turned off by this silly box cover. I, I, I'm glad they did this because a lot of people are going to go into this game and be like, wow, this is fun, but there's, it's deeper than I thought. And some people who like these deeper economic type games might be like, ah, it's a little silly for me. No, no, it's really an excellent game. So check it out. I'm very happy to play it. I'm glad Yellow brought it into a wider distribution because I really enjoyed the first one. That is Happy Pigs. Dice Tower Judgment. Excellent! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com. Shut the door. Yeah.